Okay, here we are again in the week of Bahar and Bechukosai, two weeks from Shavuos. Let's learn a little bit of Bahar and Bechukosai, and this is the parsha, double header, Bahar and And then we're going to learn a little bit about Shavuos and Megillah's Rus. If you want to um, um, see me, you can go to, I want you to over any time, but if you want to hear some of the questions on the Rus, and um, Shavuos, go to Kol HaLoshon. Um, Kol HaLoshon is a daily program, and I guess you know the number, I just dial it automatically, but it has a telephone number, all the United States, one number. Uh, I have like 2100 Shurim on there. The number is uh, 1718-395-2440. Then when the guy starts talking, you press 11101. And then you hear all the Shurim, the last one, you go all the way back to Barashas. And then you can even go to the Haftotas, all the Haftotas of all the Parashas and all the Yom Tovim. You dial instead of 11101, you dial 11104. All right, let us go a little bit into um, Bahar and find out why this is such a strange Pusik, such a very strange Sedrum. The idea of Bahar and Bechukosai is to teach you about Shemitah, that the land stays uncultured, unfarmed for one year. Did you ever heard of a country closing down agriculturally for the year? All the stores should close for a year. A man shouldn't farm for a year. You go on vacation a week or two weeks, three weeks. You close down your farm, all the country, entire country from north to south, uh, 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 grains and vegetables and fruits, everything for a year. That's called insanity. That's the first step for ruination and bankruptcy and disaster. Invasion. Animals invasion. No one's out in the field. This is a simon a, that Torah is men as because no human being would think this up. Nobody. A year you close down the country agriculturally. This is Simon and Shemai, because no one would think that up. So why did Hashem do this? Let's take a look. And they do it till today. A few years ago with Shemitah, we all supported the people, the farmers and heirs as well who keep Shemitah. And most of them keep Shemitah now. Some are violators of Shemitah. And they don't believe in the holiness of the land. They, they, they consider it just another land. And all the farmers that kept Shemitah at the end of the eighth year, Shemitah's seventh year, and the eighth year, they had a bumper product made up for the loss of a year before. You have to trust Hashem that this is how it's going to be. And uh, why would Hashem make you, you can't own the land. The Shemitah, you're not owners, it's Hefker. How come you become ownerless once every seven years? That once every seven years is called the sabbatical. He wants farmers to take off and learn for a year. That's how they got this word in the um, university world of sabbaticals, or even ancient times. A professor takes off once every seven years because they don't want the farmers to become Ame Ha'aras, people of the field. They want them to become Torah scholars so you learn in total for a year. Let's take a look at what the Pasha said. The Pasha happens to have 57 Pesukim, Bahar. Isn't that interesting? That is 7 and 50. The first 7 talk about Shemitah, which comes every 7th year. And the next 50 talk about Yovel, that comes every 50th year. A yovel means the 49th and the 50th year. Two years you don't work your field. That's double insanity. How could a Torah, how could, how could a man make such a thing like this? It has to be min shemaim. Let's take a look at the first seven pesukim of Bahar about Shemitah, which means it's really Shvis, the seventh year. And Shemitah means remove your hand from anything. No harvesting, no fertilizing. No nothing, no harvesting, no planting, no plowing, no harvesting, harvesting no pruning the, 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 the fruits, nothing. You're, it's not yours. You can go to your friend's field and eat everything without permission. He can eat everything in your field. Animals can come in your field and eat anything. Gavrim, Goyim, everybody can come and eat. You can eat theirs. It's one ownership, ownerless land. Hashem does this to let the people know that they are all Gavrim, strangers. He owns the land. Because it says here, it's Shabbos Lashem. It's not a rest for the people, it's a rest for Hashem. 
The Yedam Hashem of Moshe of Har Sinai Lemor. Hashem spoke to Moshe at Har Sinai, saying, "Dam lo bnei Yisrael, speak to the bnei Yisrael of Omatol and explain it to them." He savohu arts when you come to the land, which means in forty years from now. Hashem uh, knows the lechem that I'm giving to you. The shof soar is Shabbos Hashem. The land shall rest for God. That means the first seven years they had to fight the enemies. The second seven years they had to subdivide. So fourteen years before they started Shemitah. So forty years in the desert and fourteen is fifty-four years before they ever started such a thing. And they teach them right now. So Rashi says, why do you tell me that uh, Har Sinai, Shemitah on Sinai wasn't all the Torah given on Sinai? What's this have to do with Sinai? To let you know that this law, no human being could think this up. It's insane. It's from Hashem at Sinai. Hashem said, don't worry, it's my land, I'll protect you. No body will invade you. You will not go hungry. Trust me. And till this very day, those who are Shomre Torah and Mitzvahs keep Shemitah. And uh, none of them went hungry. Of course, we all have to support them because uh, I want to be part of the Mitzvah Shemitah, even though I live in the U.S. I want to support my brother who listens to Hashem not to work the field one year, every seven years. Shemitah is for knowing nowadays too. So at Har Sinai, so Rashi says, what is Ma Shemitah, Eitzel Har Sinai? Why do you mention Eitzel Shemitah next to Har Sinai? All the mitzvahs were given at Sinai. Of course, to let you know that nobody would think this up. It's only, only Hashem. And number two reason is that um, just like in Shemitah, all the details are given right here in this center. So all the other mitzvahs of the Torah were also given with the details. Not here in the center, but just like Shemitah is given with all the details. You'll see in the next 57 Pesukim about Shemitah and Yovel is all given right here in the, in the Chumash. That's why there's no Mesechta of Shemitah. There's only a Mesechta of Shviz. Shviz means the product of the seventh year. If I planted in my field or not, private, no one can see that. Maybe I do it at night, and I'm planting in Shemitah. And no one sees it, and all of a sudden I start at the end of the year, start bringing out products to sell. I told them, well, grew before, it was done, uh, it was planted before the seventh year, and it just grew by itself, and then I harvested before the seventh year. Make up, um, I stored it in a warehouse. That's done in Barabim. The selling of Shemitah is done in, in Rabim. Therefore, the Mesecta is called Shemitah, because it's Mephash. It's public desecration of God's name. Therefore, the Mesecta is called Shemitah, but it's not called Shemitah. Because Shemitah, Shomat means to remove your hand. Maybe I was working while nobody watched me in a, in a greenhouse. Uh, uh, maybe at night. So that's a public desecration of God, a, a private desecration of God's name. The Mesecta about this subject is not called Shemitah, it's called Shemitah. You openly market your products. Well, I uh, stored them for a year, you tell them uh, they came up before the, uh, the, the, the year started. Make up some story, right? So. So the Mashi says, why do you talk about Shemitah Eitzel Har Sinai? All mitzvahs are given at Sinai. One reason was only this could be given at Sinai. No human being could think this up. Number two, uh, like all the details are given right here. So therefore, all the mitzvahs are given and with all the details. It's just an example. Third reason is, like at the end of 40 years of motion, we reviewed the whole Torah, all the oral law, all the dinim of every din, of every mitzvah. He did everyone except this, because this is already done earlier. So that's why he's mentioned in this part. Of course, the, st- the question is, why did you use Shemitah as an example? That's the question. So one answer we gave you already to let you know that no human being could think of such a crazy thing like this. Number two, the Gaon of Shamsval Hirsch gives an answer. He says, what did we end off with just last week about the Megadev, the blasphemer who stoned to death? He said like this, the genius. The Megadev, the blasphemer who blasphemes God, that's practiced in any country, at any time, any place, anywhere. If they aid and see a man do that, they can execute him. Shemitah is just 1,000% opposite, only in Eretz Yisrael. Only after the first 14 years of entering, only under certain conditions. Ah, that's this extreme, that's that extreme. You put it together. That you know, Torah is men shemayim. Who would ever blaspheme God openly in front of people who tell you if you do it within a few seconds of our warning, we can kill, stone you? Who would do that? What, do you get, what pleasure do you get out of that? That's so remote. And to tell a people 
shut down the country for a year, that's also very remote. No human being would ever do that. Only Hashem. Therefore, we put these two ideas together. And it's interesting, the seven Pesukim of the 57 on Shemitah, because Shemitah is every seventh year, and there's 50 of the 57 is uh, Yovel, because that comes every 50th year. Interesting, isn't it? Now, let me tell you something. The word Shemitah is never used, yet never used here. You know why Shemitah is never used? It talks about uh, the land, don't seed it and don't harvest it. Don't but the word Shemitah is not used here. It's used someplace else in the Torah, in Mishpatim. In Mishpatim it says over there, Tishmetena, uh, remove your hand. But not here in this thing, not here in this part. Never use Shemitah. You know why? Shemitah, Shin Mem Tes is 354. I want you to know Hashem will never make a Shemitah year unless it's 354. Never in a leap year when it's 384. 354, Shin Mem Tes 354, to let you know Shemitah will only be in a year that has uh, 12 months, not 13 months. 354, not 384. That's why the word Shemitah is not used. To draw your attention to that. It can only be the non leap year. Like the word Soto is never used in the Pasha of Soto. Why? No normal woman would ever go through this process. She'd admit it. She wouldn't want to have herself explode. And Meraglim are never used in the parsha of Meraglim. Never, never, never. They said they, they went to the Sur as well to tour out the land. But never used Meraglim, but that's what they were. Meraglim never used. By Yeshua, he sent two Meraglim. But Moshe in the Torah would never, there's never word Meraglim. You know why? They weren't spies. They went open, undercover Asians. They dressed like everybody else. Open. They weren't really sneaking around like the two of them that Yeshua sent. They were sneaking at night. These people were open, undercover agents. So Meraglim is never used in the Pasha Meraglim to attract your word, your attention to the word Meraglim. They were not spies, they were open. Uh, they were uncover, undercover. And Sota is never used in the Pasha of Sota. It says if a woman goes and cheats on her husband, but never use the word Sota. Because no woman would ever go through this. She'd rather admit it than have her body explode. And Shemitah is never used because it lets you track your name, your attention to what Shemitah can only happen in a year that is Shin Mem Tes Hey Days, 354, not 384. Now comes the $64,000 question. Th three years ago, four years ago, we had Shemitah, it was a leap year. Mm -hmm. Now what do you say? Mm -hmm. 13 months. Ask any, <laughs> anybody who lives in Israel who listens to this understands. <sighs> you know why? Because we don't live normal. If you have Kiddush HaKodesh al about human uh, witnesses, and the Bezdin decides every year or up to them to make it a year, leap year or not, it's all not automatic printed in a calendar. It's up to Bezdin, they will never make a leap year, a Shemitah year. Never. Because they don't want you to suffer an extra month. So they'll make it a 12 month year, not a 13 month year. It will never happen on a leap year, but it happened three years ago, I think 2000, 2008, I think. Um, so, because that's, a, that's not up to a live Bezdin to decide it's pre-printed in the last 2,000 years. But when the Bezdin Mashiach comes, it'll never happen on a leap year. All right. Now I want to tell you something else. Shabbos is a rest day, right? And Shemitah is a rest year. Isn't it interesting that Shabbos Gematri is um, 702? And Sh Bahar, the center of Bahar that talks about it is 207. And both of them are 9, 7, 2 is 9. 9 is MS. Aleph Mem Tov is 1, 4, 4. That's 9. 9 means the absolute MS. You keep the Shabbos, that means you believe in God. He created the world and He rested on the seventh day. You keep Shemitah, you believe God will not let you go down the drain. You will never be go bankrupt by keeping one year and have the fallow field. You'll make it up on the eighth year. Both are MS because Misper cutting means 7 and 2, and 2 and 7 is 9. 9 is always MS, you know that. 8 is eternity, and 7 is holy in this world. 6 is Chulin, 4 is Hashem's name. Anyhow, um, now let's talk a little bit about Shavuos. Shavuos, I'm going to be, if you want to come up there, Aura has a Memorial Day weekend, which is Shavuos. I'll be up there in their camp. Here, let's talk about Shavuos. It's the last Yantiv of the year. If you start the year with Tishrei, you got Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. 
Uh, no, you started in, uh, yeah, you started in Tishrei, it's Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, and Pesach. And, Pesach, and, and then comes Shur, so it's the last Yantin, because the next Yantin, Rosh Hashanah, is the next year, starting in Tishrei. So Tishrei is Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Shemini Atzeres, uh, Hanukkah doesn't count, it's not in the Raisa, and then comes Pesach, and then comes Shavuos. And by the new year, after the Rosh Hashanah, it's already a new year, so it's the last Yontif of the year. It's only a one-day Yontif, different than all the others. There's no Chalamoy, there's no mitzvahs, and not one mitzvah, not zero mitzvahs, one Shavuos. All the two Yom Tovim, Pesach and Sukkot, is full moon, there's a half a moon. Remember I told you why and the reasons? Shavuos is seven, seventh, was the first Shavuos was the seventh of Adar. Hmm. Torah was given on the seventh of Adar. Torah is compared to water. Moshe was born, not seventh of Adar. The seventh of Sivan, seventh of Sivan, the Torah was given, and we celebrate on the sixth. But the first one was seventh of Sivan, and the Torah is equal to water because it seventy percent of the world is water. Seventy percent of your body is water. As water, every heart is rock has water in it. Water is the basis of life. Um, Moshe Rabbeinu was born on Zion Ador, and he was put in the water three months later. What day is that? Sima. And he was pulled out of the water. And water and motion. Water saved motion. The father's daughter came down, Basia, and she saved him, and she pulled him out of the water, and Moshe was in the water. And Moshe gave us Torah, which equal to water. So Moshe was three months old, because he was born in Zion Ador, and he put it in the water three months later, Zion uh, Sivan. And the Torah was Givan, Givan on Sivan, right? On the sign is a sign at door, and the toes equal to water. And Moshe was saved by the water. It's interesting. Both times, so the seventh of Sivan. So Shavuos has to do with Torah. Moshe has to do with Torah. Moshe was saved from the water on the seventh of Sivan. There's no date in the Torah. It just says count forty nine days, and then the um, uh, you have Shavuos. How come no date? Last Yantiv of the year, only one day, no Chalamoid, no mitzvahs, half a moon. We received the Torah on the day Moshe was pulled out of the water. No date. How come? Well, all these questions were answered if in, uh, in Torah uh, on the Kalalashim, the number I just gave you. <sighs> Want to know those answers? I can't give you all now. It's already... You can get my kuntras here. You'll find, you'll find it on my kuntras. Let's talk about the 30 questions of Megillah's Rus, which is right on TorahAnyTime.com. Who wrote the Megillah? How old was Rus and Boaz at their marriage? How come their marriage only lasted one day? How was Boaz related to Naomi? Why when she worked in Boaz's field, he's a god of Hador. He's a show fate. This is the hun- in the 440 year period when there was no kings. When they got into Eretz Yisrael till the first base of Migdash under Shlomo. Uh, when he was, became a king at 12 and he started building it at 16 and was finished at 21. For those 440 years there was no kings, there was Shoftim. He was one of the Shoftim. Shimshom was one, Boaz was one. Why did Boaz not talk to... No- why did Boaz not talk to Naomi, his aunt, for three months? After her return to Eretz Yisrael, she was the richest lady. She left uh, ten years before, and she didn't. He, Boaz was a god of Hador, and Naomi was the one married to the holiest man, Naomi Melech. And his, she came back poor, no shoes. Why wouldn't, he, why wouldn't he talk to his aunt, the rich woman? Why did he let Ruth pick in his field and wouldn't speak to her for three months? He gave to her a little speech in the beginning, as you see in the beginning, Rus didn't talk to her for three months. What the Gemati of Rus? You know that. 606. You have to be a Geyurus, a Geyur, you have to be a decent guy. You have to keep the Shem Mitzvah, the Neinoach, 
Well, 606 and 7 is 613. Rus kept, adopted new 606 mitzvahs because she already kept 7. How many children did Boaz have before their marriage to Rus? With Rus, she only had one child. His marriage lasted one night. And from that child came Dovod Melch, and Dovod Melch died on Shavuos. Therefore, we read Megillus, Rus, the great grandmother. She became a Giyuris, like we become Gerim on Shavuos. We said then, Nasim and Nishma, we're married to Hashem. That's why you have a chuppah inside the shul, and Ashkenazi men hug him, like a marriage. Why did all the children and the first wife of Boaz die? How many busukim are there in the Megillah? Ooh, this is good. Wow, what's the significance of that? That I have to tell you. 167 busukim. Here. How many busukim? How many Pusukim are there in the Megillah? Nine. Oh, something's wrong here. Hmm, there's something wrong here. Oh, oh, oh. I want to tell you. Uh, uh-huh. Oh, oh, oh. That's something else. Okay. How many Pesukim are there in the Megillah? Give us, uh, yeah, answer is, thinking of something else, I'm going to tell you that in a minute. They are, um, 85. 85 Pesukim. Which means, pay hey, a po, right here. 58, which is the numbers backwards, is nach, to die. Which means death. The Sukkim about Goliath. David killed Goliath. Gol David was a great grandchild of Rus. She had a child with a Boaz called Ove, who had Yishai, who had David. She was, he was a great grandchild. And Rus's other sister, who left Naomi, um, Arpa, had a great grandchild called Goliath. One stuck with Naomi, one abandoned. The great grandchildren, David killed Goliath. The whole production of of of, of David as soon as Megillah is Rus and Rus has eighty five. That means Po. David is still here. David Melchi saw Chai Bekayim. Noch means the opposite of eighty five. It's fifty eight. That means death. David killed him and his three brothers, children of Arpa. She look at Shmuel Al Yudzayim, which has fifty eight pesukim on the subject of David killing. Uh, Goliath. 85 is the opposite of 58. Living is the opposite of dead. They're dead. And David Melchi saw Chai Bekayim. Because he wanted to kill David. But David killed him. Goliath was a giant. He was twice the size of a human being. He was 12 feet tall, it says. Some say three times. 18 feet. Anyhow, what I was thinking of before is Megillah's um, Esther has 167 Bosukim. Because she went to the Chachamim and said, let's put my Megillah in Tanakh. He said, no, it's closed. 23 books, that's it, no more. She said, yeah, but uh, it's written by our Shemaim. And uh, he stayed, said, no, and Nevu is over, Tanakh is over, there's no more Ruch HaKodesh. No, forget about it. No more Nevu or nothing. She says, I have a simon min Shemaim that it should be in Tanakh. Megillah's Esther. That's 167 Sukkim Hakon. She said, in the Torah... Haman was a Amalek, right? In the Torah, it says two places about Amalek. Each one, if you add up the words, Amayava Amalek and Zuchar Shah Sadach Amalek. If you add them up, it's 167 words. And Megillus Esther is destruction of Haman. That's exactly 167 Bushukim. When the Chachaman heard that, they knew it's Menat Shemayim, they said, You're in Tanakh. So Megillus Esther, the last thing that was entered in Tanakh. Why do all the Pesukim in Rus start with a Vav? Except a Vai. Woe. Vav means woe. Vai. Woe upon such an evil generation that judges its judges. It says, Vahibimei Shifot Hashoftim. It simple meaning is when they judges judge. 
but it means that people judge their judges. If a rov or a rabbi or a daim or a rabbi told them, hey, you shouldn't do this, they say, and you, you're so much better than me. Why do you do what you do? They told off your teachers. That's why they were a very bad generation. Very bad. That's why they were in a hunger. That's what it's talked about. Terrible hunger, they were dying. Because they were disrespectful to the rabbis. He made sure to show them. Lucifer wanted to marry a Jew who had a bristle on the eighth day. That means every single Fuzzy starts with a vote except six of them. She wanted to have marry a Jew who has a bristle on the eighth day. Every Jew has a bristle on the eighth day. No, she wanted to marry a person who has self control in that area. And how you know he sh- Boaz had self control? Because he was 80 and she was 40. That one night, when she crawled in his bed, Naomi said so. And Naomi had Ruch HaKodesh. And she said, I want you to test him. See if he's good enough for you. And he couldn't do nothing all night because when men were around in different tents or in that field, they were just harvesting, finishing the harvest. And he stood up, he laid on his thumbs, two thumbs and two toes, all night, held himself up, physically not to have anything to do with her. Because she's not married, he's not married, and the eighth artist says, why not? Come on, that's one of the three legal ways you can purchase a wife. And uh, he says, but a passenger, I'm going to show faith. It's not the way you do it. Maybe it's legal, but it's disgusting. And it says in the Gemara, Rav used to give a person malchus when he get married that way. That's common law wife, it says. I mean, it's not just a one-time thing. It's a real white life. It's a, a wife for life, but instead of her star and kusuva, he just does that. And that's legal. One of the three binding, it's disgusting, but it's 100% legal. And um, to do that only instead of the others, that's disgusting. Rav Mangit. And Rav used to give people Malchus who did that. Even though they're married, but he gave Malchus. So he said, yeah, I can do it. And, and, and I'm 80, how long will I live? And she's the biggest Sedeqas in the world. I can see that. So he held himself up with his two thumbs and two toes to show how much self-control he had. Naomi was watching to see if Boaz is good enough for her niece, for her da- daughter-in-law, Rus. Is who is greater, Yosef at Sadiq, and that woman Potiphar, Ish Potiphar, or Boaz? So Gemara says, of course Boaz is greater. Yosef's encounter with her was only one minute. This was all night. Boaz, in him is strength. He had to be the sucking the chet of his proud protus, proud protus, his predescendant, Yehuda and Tomar. He did hold himself back. My father brings down the safer. That's the godless of Boaz. He was massacring the chet of his predecessor, Yehuda and Tomer. Now, many, many, many years, thousand years later, comes Boaz, massacring the chet of Yehuda, and good enough for, for the mother of Mashiach, because she's the mother of Mashiach. Rus, Ove, Yishai, Dovet, Shlomo, Mashiach. That's what we're talking about, Gilles Rus over here. Mashiach. Okay, that is uh, what we're going to do now. We're done for this evening. We will, um, here's the Shem, see you again next week. And we have the next Sedra. We'll finish Sefer uh, Vayikra. Then we go to Bamidbar. Bahabichu Kosai. That's the end of Sefer Vayikra. Zayi Gizun, everybody. And have a meaningful weekend start learning Megillus Rus right now. Because it's...